and boom, I got hit by a westbound heading SUV that knocked me into the eastbound lane, and then I got run over by a, a what a Tundra. It's just interesting that that uh, they took that accident to to hit me to throw me sure. right into my purpose. But I search for the the heavy hitters, the actives, the the carrier oils, the ones that are the most expensive home, like the, the, a lot of companies just use a spec of, and then I combine them all into one and just make a dream team. That, but I started off on doing that because I wanted to make the best product to counteract my scarring right here, which turned into my night crew. Sure, Absolutely. Sure. I would say pay attention to the things that excite you. I mean, uh, Jim Carrey said it in a, in a speech uh, about a year ago or something, you know, this is only, this is our only life, you know. I mean, whether it's a job, and, you know, I remember so, a, a friend of mine told me when I was working nightlife jobs and um, service industry jobs, so take that leap, leave. Like you're not meant to poison people bartending and uh, you're not meant to be a waiter. Like take that leap and leave and focus on nutrition, focus on personal training and helping others. I guarantee it's gonna work out. I resented that from her. So oh, what am I gonna do, just leave my job that pays my bills? I'm like, oh yeah, how, is it just gonna magically appear? I'm telling you that things happen. Things have a, you know, usually have a, a, a way of working themselves out. Now, I, finding out how to do that, find, find a way, find a way. You know, I would say trusting in the universe and taking that leap as hard as it is like that. Find something that's gonna make you feel good. And you're, 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 well, I think we all have something special inside of us. We all have a gift, you know, pursue that, find that, you know, and then, you know, I love, I love helping people find theirs. We all have some type of gift, you know, pursue it. Welcome to our 13th episode of American Reel, where this week our guest is Andy Nilo, former star athlete, actor and model turned entrepreneur. After being struck by a series of large vehicles while crossing a busy street on March 20th, 2011, Andy woke up in a hospital bed suffering from multiple injuries, including a broken jaw and ribs. While recovering, his desperation to heal became his inspiration, and in the process, he created a wondrous healing mask followed by a full line of all natural skincare products he named Alatura. His journey would bring him together with Dave Asprey, the founder of Bulletproof Coffee and Bulletproof Nutrition, where Dave would become a partner in Alatura. When Andy says the products are all natural, he means it, confessing most are even edible and some actually taste good. Andy is a living example of perseverance, determination, and the ultimate pursuit of your inner passion. Please share this episode with your friends, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe to the American Real YouTube channel. I'd like to thank our partners and sponsors, especially Happy Socks, turning an everyday essential into a colorful design item. I'll be wearing Happy Socks each and every episode. And if you'd like to try the Alatura products, go to alaturanaturals.com. That's A-L-I-T-U-R-A naturals.com and use the coupon code American upon checkout to receive a very special offer. And now, without further ado, I bring to you Mr. Andy Nilo. Welcome to American Real. This is Roger Brooks, and today my very special guest is Andy Nilo. 
Uh, Andy, thank you so much for being on the show and thank you for letting us film at your corporate office here in Los Angeles. <laughs> well, no, for, thank you so much for having me. And, um, you know, we, we call this the corporate office and it's a big step up from where we were months ago out of my little dingy apartment in North Hollywood where it was all, you know, happening. I mean, everything from manufacturing to assembling the orders, drop shipping, customer service, and having a staff there in a single bedroom apartment in North Hollywood was how it all started, but um, here we are now in, in a house, but it's still a home, you know, and it's some people say, you know, you want to find a way to separate a home and your business, but I mean, my, my life is my business. I don't want to call it too, too it's just uh, business oriented or anything like that, but uh, it's just, it's my absolute passion, obsession, purpose, all tied into one, and that's how it's Naturals, man. So. This is it. That's great. So, you know, it was great just to be here a little bit and, and observe uh, the staff and things happening. I know you guys had an exciting phone call. and But before we get into all that, right. um, what, describe what it feels like um, to take something from inception, create it, mm -hmm. and then see orders go out the door. What's that? What is that feeling like uh, to, when, when someone actually puts their faith and trust in you to buy your product? It's unbelievable. The first one is surreal from an outside source. You know what I mean? So I sold a couple around town. You know, just it was really awkward. It's like, because uh, coming up with a price, uh, charging somebody uh, for a product that you, that I would just go around town and I would, it was my beta testing. And, so just sampling with people. I never charged anybody anything. I just wanted to know what they thought because I knew I had something, but I just, you know, I, you know, a lot of us think that we have something sometimes and other people try it and it's, it may be a little different, but I just, the collective reaction, collective response from everyone was amazing. And that was my beta testing. But leading up to that, I just couldn't charge anybody. And it was just, it was like a, it was a creative outlet for me, you know? And it, and it was just, it was like, you know, right, you know cooking a meal, um, drawing a painting. Um, that's what it was for me, just creating this mask and then sharing it. And so from taking it from that standpoint to actually coming up with a price and accepting money, we had a lot of people at the beginning that wanted to pay. They truly did. And I just, I couldn't do it. Um, I, but uh, just because it was just, a, it was just a share, I was just sharing something mm -hmm. that my passion. And so, but that first translation to a business is hard to put into words. My first sale was setting up my, my business bank account with my, um, uh, with uh, she, Colleen in Bank of America out here in Toluca Lake. And she was like, I want to be your first customer. And, you know, I was just like, I had to come up with a price on the spot. It was twenty five dollars cash, but I had the packaging was just this uh, clear uh, to go assembly from Solo, you know, Solo brand cups yes. that you get at Whole Foods, and like a snap shut container, <laughs> tape it shut. I didn't even have a label at this point, no directions or anything. I had to explain to her what how to do it, but it, I just came back, so I didn't have it on me. And, but uh, there's twice as much product in the Alatar clay mask now, um, but or, well, then there was twice as much product, but now there's. It was obviously half, and I was charging twenty-five dollars, and it, it, just handing over to her, no shipping or anything. I was actually losing money on the product, considering the, the raw goods cost. But I didn't know; I never even calculated my raw goods cost. That that was just how this all started. It was just learning on the go. Then I did the podcast with Dave, and then things really changed, and I had to had to learn how to properly do it. Great. No, and I definitely want to get to some of those stories, but uh, before we do that, um, can you take us back and and Tell us about your upbringing uh, in, in Northern California, correct? And then uh, a little bit about your days as an athlete, as a model, as an actor. Um, really, who you know? Who are you? What you know? What makes what makes you tick? Man, so yeah, I grew up in Northern California. I was born in Fortuna, California, which is in Humboldt County. And I uh, we moved down. Our family moved down to the San Francisco Bay Area when I was two. Um, lived in San Francisco for a little bit, then moved to Petaluma, California, and then moved to Palo Alto, California. We traveled a little bit for my dad's work. He's in the tech industry in Silicon Valley. And I, yeah, at 11 years old, I moved to Palo Alto. And that's tough to move from Petaluma, at the, you know, from where I was living until I was 11. That's a tough age to just sure. pick it up and move. 
but my brother and I did it. Uh, my younger brother Michael is uh, 22 months younger than I am, so I believe he was nine at the time. And yeah, so we just started over in Palo Alto. That's where my my, uh, my family is now. And I went to, I've been an athlete my whole life. Uh, got a baseball scholarship to UC Berkeley. Um, had a very uh, good baseball career. But it's just things didn't work out. I had a partially torn rotator cuff and I, I wanted to rehab it. I wanted to continue to play professionally. And I moved down to Los Angeles where I was going to start to heal. With a partial tear, you have to do a lot of annoying exercises and stretching to build back that muscle. Mine was a rotator cuff and it was difficult because it's one of those things you kind of think's ready, then you push through it and now you get set back. And I, so I, I was in the midst of doing that, I was working out at Beverly Hills High School and just working at Abercrombie, getting you know, odd jobs, living on a friend's couch. Well, that friend was auditioning for a film, a baseball related film. And I was running lines with him and, and I just, you know, I just, I'm still fresh in baseball. And so I was telling him how to act in certain things. I mean, he hasn't played since Little League. It's funny, all okay. actors lie and think they can figure it out, you know? <laughs> Um, but he was running, running lines and I didn't care. So sometimes when you don't care, you just put forth you know, your best work. And I was, both of us knew it. The character was me to a T. It really was. And that was odd. But I didn't know how to suggest like, hey, do you mind getting me in for this role? That just doesn't happen in Hollywood. You need an agent. You need a manager. You need to get submitted for an audition. It was a big process, process for a big film like this. This was a feature film. And, and a lot goes into that. Well, he... He had a connection to the director and got a picture and said, look, this guy's never acted before, but he is this character, which is really cool to him because he was auditioning for the character. So it's a I'm, good I'm, friend. That, exactly. Yeah, his name's Billy Snow. I can't believe he did it, but um, that's awesome. Uh, but so he got me a read, and uh, which is an audition for that. And it was, I think, six, page, six pages of sides. And, you know, usually now to this point, I freak out about it. I overanalyze auditions and things like that. But back then, I didn't care. I was like, so I nailed it. Got a callback, another callback, a screen test, and I ended up booking the lead role in that film. Wow. Gave up baseball, got representation, started auditioning, started modeling. I mean, that's how it all started in LA. I mean, months after moving here, got my SAG card um, months after moving here. And it all, it, it kind of fell into my lap, and it was a smooth transition. Um, out of baseball into the entertainment industry. And um, but let's so, talk about that yeah. because I think a lot of times these type of situations happen to all of us, mm -hmm. right? But you have to be open to taking some risks, taking you know a, a challenge that you've never done before. Right. I mean, in some ways, did your athletic background, the competitiveness, maybe prepare you for this? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I just I've always loved that challenge. I've always loved taking that leap. Um, I've always loved challenging myself when certain things were supposed to be realistic. When I was 14, I, I had a, a coach tell our whole team that none of us were going to move on to the next level. I mean, that's just crippling to hear to a lot of people. I, I, I developed a healthy chip on my shoulder from that point on to prove him wrong. I mean, to pr I mean, I just didn't like what he, you know, what he said. I couldn't understand why. Who's he to tell me that, that I couldn't uh, do that, you know, or anybody? I was growing into my body. I was a freshman. I forget what age I was, but I just, I, I bought, uh, we lived right across the street from Stanford University. I bought these little strength shoes and I just became absolutely obsessed with working out, uh, with uh, working period. Uh, um, my work ethic period was just insane. I was, I would, uh, I would tape baseball tonight. I would tape sports center. I was a free sport athlete back then, baseball, football, basketball. Oh. With baseball being my, my best sport, but I was I was very good at football and very good at basketball too. But uh, baseball was my, my you know one thing that I really wanted to take to the next level. I wanted to be a ball player, and so I just I, I bought these strength shoes. I was still growing into my body. I was gangly, little 140 pounds, six <laughs> foot one, whatever. But I started to work at that. I started to eat right. I would I would ride my bike downtown to Bang, uh, Burger King and buy the two little uh, double cheeseburgers, and I would look at three things. Yeah fat, calories, and protein, because I needed to gain weight. Mm -hmm. I needed to put on weight, and that's what that was my little routine. I would work out as hard as I could. I would hit until my hands uh, bled, um, and, I would just, and I would wear Alex Rodriguez jerseys underneath my, my actual jersey, a baseball player. I'm sure you know who Alex oh, sure. Rodriguez is, being from New York. And I just, man, I became obsessed with working hard, not with proving him wrong, but proving myself right. And so that, that 
intrinsic motivation at such an early age and then, and then starting to prove yourself right and starting to see the fruits of your labor getting called up to varsity as a freshman um, and then uh, varsity football as a sophomore. I mean, it was just things were things were moving. I was on uh, the area code team, youngest player in, uh, in the, the whole area. It's like comprised of the top 100 players in the country. Um, Josh Beckett was there. A lot, I mean, a lot of major leaguers were on my team. I mean, it was cr it's crazy back then, but I was the youngest player, so I got to learn that I was competing at a national level. And that, that, at that age, you, I mean, it's, you, it's so exciting. Getting those letters in the mail from University of Miami, from Alabama, uh, USC, Stanford. I mean, this is, it was my dream, and it was starting to happen at such an early age. And, and so what I learned from that was just work obsessively hard. Uh, focus, maintain that discipline and work ethic, and you, you, you're going to knock goals down, and you're going to just build this little inferno that turns into uh, just a blaze, and that, that's, that's how athletics, that's where it all started, and then it's translated into what I do now, I think, and then, and then acting as well, I just really, it's competitive, everything's competitive, right? right? I mean, if it's hard, you know. Right. It's, it's, and where does that come from? Was that instilled in you? Uh, uh, your parents, you know, uh, was it your upbringing, or is it something you just took upon yourself and, and developed your own methodology? Uh, well, my, my dad, his work ethic is, just, I mean, his focus, it, it's just his consistency. It has to be from my dad, it has to be from my dad. My mom, it was just so sweet as well. They're both hard workers, super caring, Midwestern uh, people. I just, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of uh, who I was raised by and improving them. Uh, making them proud. Sure, sure. <laughs> That's, but uh, I would say my father, uh, Joe Nilo, and um, yeah, he just uh, loved, you know, he just really has provided a lot for our family and he built it from scratch. He's a, he's a great human and I want to be like him, hopefully soon. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so take us back to 2011. Um, you had a pretty severe accident. Right. Can, can we go back to that day and describe what happened? Sure, so I had uh, just left a restaurant and I was contacting a friend of mine, and boom, I got hit by a westbound heading SUV that knocked me into the eastbound lane, and then I got run over by a, a what, a Tundra? And I, I was, I'm not that good with trucks, but uh, I don't know, Toyota Tundras are huge. I mean, I lost consciousness on the first point of impact. Um, you know, they had to zip my, uh, my pants, my underwear, shirt, all of it off me. Um, I had a compound fracture. Right here, two titanium plates were inserted, one up top, one beneath, broke seven ribs. I had a collapsed lung. Uh, I was looking at my chin in the ICU room. I mean, it was, I was on morphine. I didn't know what was going on, but I'm very lucky to be sitting here talking to you. And I, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it was a very humbling experience. I mean, I, I, was, I feel like you know, I've been the same person all along outside of just being rocked, that accident rocked me right into why I'm, why I'm here. I'm here to help people feel better about themselves, period. You know, it's just, I was underachieving before. I was hoping something would happen in the entertainment industry, and it was, I was working. I was working a good amount, more than a lot, a lot of people, um, and that was good, it made me feel good. But, I mean, now it's just, now I can control what I do, I can control the products I make daily. I can control how I treat a business that I that I built. It's a lot different than um, you know working your ass off for uh, Conan the Barbarian, a movie that I auditioned for, and then doing everything that you wanted to do, and then losing it because of my hair color or my eye color, and getting down to the wire and so many different things. That's how that's the entertainment industry. And I like baseball. I had a tough time with uh, shaking failure, and you know it's that. That's that's what um, you know, kind of. But I'm, I'm so happy, like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. But it's interesting. It's just interesting that that uh, that took that accident to to hit me, to throw me sure. right into my purpose. But it was a long road to recovery. I mean, I'm still going through it. I can't feel the side of my chin. I severed a nerve right here that uh, generates all communication from the brain to the facial muscles. So it's fuzzy. Um, like if I bite down on my lip as hard as I can, I can start to feel it. It's really weird, you know, just feeling this, and then you feel the sensitivity on this right here, that's mm -hmm. fine, but like right here, and then here, nothing, you know? So similar to when you go to the dentist and they... No, yeah, very, yeah, that's exactly what my lip feels like, mm -hmm. like 
forever. <laughs> well, uh, geez, I hope, hope not forever. Right. But, I, you know, the thing is, that's where perspective comes in. I People don't, when I left the hospital, uh, a former Marine was my nurse and he goes, hey, hey, just want to let you know, any day that you can walk out of a hospital is a good day. Okay. And he's right. You know, I, I didn't have any knee, feet, uh, foot, foot issues, uh, elbow. I mean, I could, you know, I was banged up extremely and a lot of pain, but I didn't uh, break any bones in my my like my, my legs, my mm-hmm. arms. Mm-hmm. I could, strangely enough, I started to think immediately about how I could how I could beat this thing and like get back and recover quickest mm. with my jaw wired shut. And my teeth my teeth were nubs, and um, I was a oh, bit sneezing with seven broken ribs. I can't even describe that pain, but because you oh. know when when you know it's coming, you're all no, 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 no. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Put the pillow there and try oh, to brace man. it. Oh yeah. man, but. How long yeah. was the recovery? So, I had a job for Macy's, a runway job in, I want to say, early June. Accident was March 20th. And so, I got my, my wires out of my jaw um, the Thursday before that Saturday of the, the job. I didn't call my, my agent in San Francisco. I, so I made my little goal to get back, to just do the job. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to call them, and I was like, you know, they, if if anything that week of, if, if I didn't think I could do it, um, I would just call them like, hey, look, something came up, and they could book another model or whatever. But I just made my little goal to, to do that. Uh, it was weeks later. I want to say eight weeks, seven, eight weeks, six, six eight weeks, something like that. That's impressive. Uh, thanks. I mean, but I uh, yeah, there was a every day uh, had had a very specific routine that I did. I, I mean, I. I Developed a, a tonic, a morning tonic of adaptogenic herbs, amino acids, um, Ayurvedic herbs, Chinese herbs. I met with a lot of different Chinese herbalists to figure out a way to get my system back and build my frame back as quick as possible by building my blood, circulating my blood. You know, Chinese philosophy is just big on uh, revitalizing herbs such as you know Hoshu Wu, Gynostemma, Shizandra. I mean, you name it, Chaga. I mean, it's just I became obsessed with getting rid of my inflammation naturally. I didn't want to use any of the, topically, I didn't want to use any of the serums and creams that were used to you know, minimize scarring or abrasions, but also internally, I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to use painkillers. I didn't want to use uh, hydrocodone. and uh, I didn't want to even want to take aspirin. I wanted to use an all natural remedy, the turmeric, black pepper. Now, believe me, right after it happened, it, that's, that's not smart. I mean, you, you got to take. I mean, it's excruciating. I mean, yeah. They're essentially drilling in plates to your bone. I mean, you have to take it, and that's what medicine's for. But after that, I just became extremely obsessed with. All right, how am I going to? I use myself as my own biggest science experiment, so to speak, internally, externally, and I just want to recover quickest. Not not only for that job, that was just there for time constr- or reasons or whatever to kind of project if I could to see if I could. But just daily, I wanted to see some type of result I wanted to see or feel some type of improvement and that made me feel good if it happened and it, it did you know I started it's, everything there was something planned all day every day I was working a week and a half later uh, at the the nighttime job that I had with my jaw wired shut you know I mean yeah and the doctors uh, must have been very impressed they yeah yeah, they, they definitely were, and um, I met every month with uh, the, the maxillofacial uh, specialist just to, and I would get x-rays done to see how the bone was growing back, and just checkups here and there. They, they were very impressed, but I was in very, they, they attributed it to uh, how I was in very good shape when I got hit. It's true, but also, I was just, I mean, the stuff that I was doing, I mean, all day, all day long. You know. So where does that come from? Did, did you have an interest in that prior to the accident? Health and wellness, yes. skincare. care? Mm, I had, not where it is now. I de- had a definite interest and I had a definite passion. I, it was there, but this, I mean, just turned it up big time to, uh, to you know, out of necessity. I wanted to, to, to just heal quickest and feel best um, as, as, quick, as quick as possible. And so that really kind of lit a fire under that, that uh that, that interest and turn it into just just an absolute yeah where it is now and but it sounds like it was a wake-up call in many in many aspects absolutely I was I was a little reckless you know I mean there you know it was just life was fun it was exciting uh, you know being in on TV and doing things that I've always dreamt you know dreamt of and um, it, it was a lot of fun to, 
but you know, and seeing yourself on commercials and things like that, it's just it leads to a, and I'm an excited dude in sure. general, <laughs> but, you know. But uh, so, it, but you know, I had to curtail it. You know that 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 can't that can't go on forever. And I have a bigger purpose. I I just I was. Yeah, I mean, I use the word underachieving, but I, I wasn't satisfied. I would look at my buddies uh, with with families and, and good jobs and children and um, and wives. I mean, all, all things that I, all, all I've seen my whole life is my mom, my dad, and, and my little brother. Family. I'm, I'm a very big family oriented person, but and here I was kind of running around, and I, I think uh, it needed to happen. I think it needed to happen. So. Um, uh, other than the physical aspect of your recovery, what about um, uh, your mental, spiritual, if if any? Uh, how did did that play into to your recovery? Yes, it did. I you know I bought this inversion table to help mm. just the circulation on my spine. I was really bunched up, and I you know I needed to get my discs you know to free them up a little bit. I luckily I didn't have any serious damage, but. I just I did that every morning, and I had this routine where I, I still talk to my mother, um, and I, you know talk to someone that I love, whether it's my mom, my sister, or something like that. I've shot a plane. Little did I know that was my part of my morning routine. I was just doing it because it made me feel good. It, I just knew what I could do to to kind of make you know start my day off on the right foot. I mean, you start your day off, you look in the mirror, and you're like, oh, you know. But to, you you can either sit around and wallow in that, and, and or you can like figure out a way to do the things that we can control to make it feel better. You know, I would get sun a little bit and just, you know, the endorphins or the vitamin D absorbing a little bit of that. A little bit of that. It, was, it was something that I did um, all day just to increase that type of uh, endorphin level. I, I was down, I was rocked. It was a very dark year, year, year and a half. But I, so I needed to do everything within my control to, to beat that dark period, whatever it was, whatever I could do, just to music, meditation, that was my, my, uh, my spiritual, you know, because you gotta be grateful, you have to have perspective. I got hit and run over by two cars and my jaw is gonna you know, grow back, I can get the, the wires out, I'm gonna have teeth, like I'm alive though, the, the bone, the ribs are gonna grow back. Like a lot of people don't survive those accidents. Hit and run over by two cars, I still have the, the paperwork from uh, EMT, and I keep that. I look at that. I, I still keep uh, my ICU insure that uh, they gave me. I still keep the the letter that my sister wrote on this outside of our wall because I had so many beautiful friends come visit me in the hospital. Like I have a lot to be extremely grateful for, and I definitely am. So, yeah, it did definitely changed me from a spiritual aspect. I mean, yeah. And uh, so, so tell us how this path. To wellness grew into a business. I mean, how how did that journey begin? So, when I went home, I started studying spa treatments and then throwing my little twist into an existing clay mask that I was using every Sunday night as an actor. Uh, calcium bentonite clay, Russell, um, Kaolin, and I think I had organic kelp powder in in the mass at that time that I was doing every Sunday night. It was my own little my thing, but it was so hard for me to admit that I was doing it. I never did, but I knew the results I was going to get every single time. And it set the tone for an audition, the week. I mean, my skin was so clear and then uh, firm and tight. And I just it made me feel good, but I definitely kept it to myself up until the accident. And then so when I after the accident, I came home and I started doing that and putting it on, and I started. You know, you get, there's a lot of blood flow to the surface of the skin, and uh, you know the swelling in doing that. The the swelling was was being significantly reduced. My, the scarring, the abrasions were. I mean, this is over time. It didn't happen overnight, but staying consistent with this, I mean, it, it just really turned up the recovery of my uh, my face and my my scarring and uh, my my abrasions. So I knew I had something there. I I just it, I would look at spot treatments, but also I I just kind of. Experimented with things like pearl powder, colostrum, ginseng, all things I've never seen used um, topically uh, until now. And then, so I just I'd mix it up and I would notice, I, I tried a lot of different things. I, I loved doing it because it was one thing that I knew I would see a result every single time after doing it. Whether it was just like a nice bright complexion or the, the blood flow, getting those capillaries circulated around the face. And so I, I, I look forward to doing it. But I also, I mean, I had no idea this is my beta testing. I was formulating 
a product that's now in you know, 75 countries. So I, I'm trying to figure out, I mean, I, so I moved everything out of my bedroom into my living room, made my living room my, my bedroom, and then my back bedroom, I, I just started buying all these clays in bulk and started mixing them up, testing them on friends. I, I didn't have a name, I mean, I didn't have any intention of turning this into a business, but the people that saw me in the ICU shortly after saw me again and they were blown away and like, what are you doing? And I'm like, finally, I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing this mask, you know, and like mask. I'm like, yeah, it's like a clay mask. You ever done one of those? And I'm like, yeah, a lot of people had, but some people had. So I'm like, do you mind? Do you, do you want to try it out? I couldn't believe they wanted to. So I would drive around town with my backpack, apple cider vinegar, essential oils. Um, and this is my first, you know, beta testing of the mask. And granted, there was twice as much kelp powder in there, uh, a lot more, um, a lot more ascorbic acid. I, because I was, I was eyeballing it and throwing it in there. And I just knew, uh, I knew the results that I liked. Mm -hmm. It was all done through teaspoons, quarter teaspoons, half teaspoons, tablespoons, just how I, how I measured it. It was never, it wasn't specifically done until years later. But um, it's, yeah, it's interesting that, I mean, the collective response was incredible. I mean, dancers, actors, friends of friends, everybody needed it. And all I asked for was just, if they wanted to, maybe take a picture and kind of, it's fun for me. And I, I just wanted feedback. And because I, I knew I had something, it's kind of fun to create something and just hear what people think. Sure. I mean, that, that was it, that was the extent of it. I, I was still just trying to recover. Never start a business. I mean, I had no intention. I mean, who would, who would, who would, you know, buy in or believe a, a guy that has no chemistry background or I mean? But I just, I, I, I it turns out, I just, I really, really seek and uh, seek ingredients, extracts, butters, clays, whatever powders. I mean, you, I'm, I, I'm obsessed with this, and so I just find I, I, so I have Skype conversations from all around the world, talking with people. With, you know, uh, English is their second language, and I'm we're trying to feel it out, and, and just. But I, one thing you can't deny is just like passion and, and, and attention to detail on ingredients, whatever it is. And, and it turns out I'm I'm using a few Bariti, Andaroba, Prakashi, Asai from the Amazon. I mean, this is a yeah. I mean, it's, that's but searching out, asking a lot of questions, you learn when you're you know you're you're testing on yourself and you're you're your own biggest science experiment, like I said. And, you, you're accelerated to learn, or well, you're incentivized to learn when you really just want to accelerate your healing. And that was, that's what I was doing in, in doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, we, I started uh, years later down the road. It took a while, but yeah, hopping on that podcast with Dave Asprey, February 2014. Um, he, we were talking health and nutrition and, and, and wellness. I was so like just happy to be there. Um, and we were talking, you know, mostly just on resilience and nutrition. But towards the end, he asked me what I was doing for my skin because I told him about how banged up I was. And I'm so glad I did. But I, I you know, because it was, it was hard to admit as a former athlete or whatever or guy at that time right. that I was doing a clay mask and I was obsessed with skincare. But I did. And so I just explained, just like pretty much how I explained to you that I started studying spot treatments and then adding my own twist to uh, an existing clay mask. and. And then, uh, yeah, so he got such a response from that. He had the number one podcast on iTunes for health, wellness, and all of that called Bulletproof Radio. Millions of downloads and from all around the world. And I, I, I didn't have a website or anything. I said it was pending. It definitely wasn't pending. And so, I, but I did give out, he, he had my personal email address. And I mean, every time, when it aired, every time I refreshed my Yahoo browser, it was a new 24, whatever it is, people saying really nice things, but also people wondering how they could buy the product. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you start. I mean, it was the most exhilarating feeling ever. Dave got a serious response too. He flew down here to LA. We uh, went through uh, some discussions and then he, he bought into Alatura and he's my first partner. He took it on his site, the same Bulletproof site that I used to buy product, well, I still buy product from. And uh, that's, I, can't, I really can't describe that moment. It's like being a Yankee fan all uh, growing up and then getting drafted by the Yankees. I swear that's, that's like, uh, it's really hard to put into words. I mean, I wanted to work for Bulletproof. That's why I contacted him. I troubleshooted his email address because uh, I, I, I loved his products. I loved his attention to detail with his products. And, and I wanted to figure out a way to, to work for Bulletproof somehow. And so I troubleshooted his email address. Finally, you know, D.Asprey, Dave Asprey at Bulletproof because I knew they're, they're a common uh, 
uh, the contact through the contact link what it was, but I didn't have his, so I just all of them bounced back except one. One went through. They brought me on board as an ambassador, and the rest is history. They brought me on the podcast, and it's just like good for you. Thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. And, and you said it earlier, the word passion, and that's oh, exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Is passion drove this, right? I mean, if if you didn't have that desire or interest to get better. Um, but the interest in itself to help others, this would have never um, progressed. It's, it's, it's my favorite word, passion, love, neck and neck. It's, it's so close, but they're both beautiful. Um, you know, to have a passion come, to close one door with a passion, baseball. And then I wasn't passionate about acting or entertainment industry. To have a door close that you're so excited and passionate and love so much that you've done your entire life is will lead a lot of people into depression and funks and understandably so. It's what are you gonna do? You panic. And uh, to to be to search for that, and I was there. I was 30 years old. I didn't know what my purpose was. I didn't know what I was gonna do with my life. All I wanted was to do something uh, with my life. I mean, I had a degree. I wanted to make my parents proud. I wanted to do something for myself as well. Acting was, it filled like a, a void that was excitement. So excitement is the spice of life, you know, it really is. So when you're on set and you're doing exciting things and it, you know, looks cool to your friends and family, that filled it for a little bit. But, but right here, it's, I mean, this is, this is something. It, it's, it, I have goosebumps daily because of the reviews I hear, something that I created. I mean, the emails, the messages, it's, I, it's hair raising. I mean, it's just, that's passion. I mean, and people, people respond to passion. It's that, I don't, I mean, I've had, I've been, I, I, but I, I bought something recently, an art piece that I really didn't really want to buy. I forget, it was like some pine cone, to, I forget uh, where it was, but it was at some art festival. And I bought it because I could see this, this guy's eyebrows were raising. I mean, it's so passionate about how he created it and why he did. I just bought it. I wanted to support that, and I, uh, I passion. People respond to passion, and it it can inspire them to follow you know follow up on theirs. No, and that's a good little story. And you know, again, this podcast is all about getting messages out there. Mm -hmm. So we need to do more of those things. If you Absolutely. see the passion in someone's eyes, yeah. if you're sitting there at an art fair or whatever it may be, and you could help the the person out to give them additional drive, that that could go a long way. It's extremely validating. Yeah. That for I mean, every sale. I mean, everything that comes in completely validates what, what we do, mm -hmm. the work that we put in. The 52 revisions on the <laughs> Pro Cleanser, that's, that's insane, by the way. That, it's just, but I, I, just, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't release it if it wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. I would not. I would, all that time and revisions and money or whatever, I wouldn't put it on unless it was perfect. That's, and that's why people love your product. No, I mean, thank you. I mean, I, I appreciate that. It's, but it's just, where was I going with that? It's just that... Uh, it's yeah that validation for the work that goes into it that uh, it's just you know building something from scratch and it, you, I know I need that validation. I want I care. I want to know that people love as much as I do. And when when you truly care and you see others that do, it's contagious. And you I mean th this life can be so, I mean can be absolutely breathtaking. And and it's uh, that's why I'm here. I just hopefully can uh, inspire others to follow through with what their mind, with the gut with the universe, all that is telling them. You know, this has been in front of me my entire life. It's been staring at me in the face my entire life, writing up diet plans at, uh, at the colleges I went to, people asking. I remember a, a cop was writing up a ticket for a lady, and I was just jogging, and he flagged me down on my jog, in the middle of my jog in Lancashire, there. and this lady had to be, uh, you know, irritated. He stops writing up the ticket, comes over, calls his wife, puts me on the phone with his wife, his wife happened to be at Whole Foods at the time because he was just gonna, he knew that he must have just talked to her or something. And so I started going through uh, like different nutrition, like things to get. And I remember I told him to get this back when I ate garbanzo beans or whatever. I'm like, yeah, garbanzo beans loaded in fiber protein. I don't eat garbanzo beans anymore. He's like, oh, yeah. Come on. I mean, if right. you get a cop on a jog, there were so many signs basically mm -hmm. that were throwing me in my entire, so many clues the universe was getting me that I'm supposed to be in health and wellness and nutrition, skincare, just make people feel better about themselves, you know? That's what, uh, right. that's what I love doing. And so, yeah, it's, uh, now, now it's just, you know, it's fun. There's a sense of urgency and I, 
I just want to, I really feel like our brand uh, has a lot of potential to stand out amongst others on, on any shelf. I really believe that. Tell us about the name. Where did it come from? So Alitur is Latin for feeding, nourishing. Um, you know, your skin being your largest organ, you want to treat it like another mouth. Uh, I mean, so many, you know, kind of like a birth control. They, like, you know those, it's, uh, they're like little patches and it's absorbed. The, the chemical or whatever is absorbed into your system within seconds to uh, fight against, you know, as a you know, contracep uh, contraception agent. <laughs> but basically my, my, uh, my point here is you want, what, what you put onto your skin is going to be absorbed. So you want to make sure there's no toxins whatsoever, no synthetic ingredients, artificial colors, fragrances, preservatives, like harsh chemicals that are paraben steroids I mean, that are in so many common uh, skincare products these days. And I, to me, I just want to treat it like another mouth and like a meal, like a meal for your skin with really good butters, extracts. I mean, a lot of my products are food grade. Pretty much all of them you can eat. I don't know if I would eat my fragrance or my, uh, my uh, body oil, but everything else, I, I seriously, my, my pro cleansers, not, it doesn't even taste that bad. My night cream's actually kind of, it's decent. My body oil tastes good. I'm not even kidding. But, um, so yeah, it's just. But hence yeah. the name Nourishment, right? Yeah. And, and, and that's how you came up with the name. Right, yeah. yeah. It's really good. Yeah, feeding, you know, escorting those micronutrients and those good right. dense ingredients into the system. So you've rattled off a number of names that I've never heard of. I mean, where... <laughs> I've rattled off a lot. <laughs> and it's, but no, it's great. Like, where did you come up? How did you find these ingredients that other companies aren't using? And obviously, it's much more expensive, I'm sure, it is, to source yeah. these. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we see all the artificial ingredients in, in typical products that you find on the shelf. But what, how, did, how did that all come to be? It's a great question. So... I search for the, the heavy hitters, the actives, the, the carrier oils, the ones that are the most expensive, home, like the, the heavily marketed ingredients, extracts, like the one that, that a lot of companies just use a speck of, and then I combine them all into one and just make a dream team. That, but I started off on doing that because I wanted to make the best product to counteract my scarring right here, which turned into my night cream. I'm mean, using things like hyaluronic acid, sea buckthorn oil, colostrum, K Factor 16 manuka honey, two different plant derived stem cells. I mean, all those, I could make one product out of each of those and then have a whole thing and kind of, it creates customer confusion. I don't really, I'm not going to do that. If you, our branding is the, the, the moisturizer, the night cream, the body looks. I make one that's an absolute home run and I, the results are, uh, you know, they, I, I believe they speak for themselves. And so, just finding those actives, but also I, I got lucky a few times just scouring the internet. I mean, I will go to no end. It's what I love doing. So I mean, if I was if it was playing the guitar or something like that, it's just it's they say it's the things that you do when nobody's watching, nobody's looking mm -hmm. that you would do regardless uh, um, if you weren't getting paid. And I mean, this is, this is stuff. I mean, I do it for the reward of how I feel, you know, and what what these butters, what sea buckthorn, what cacao butter, what. Propolis, royal jelly, beeswax, all these things combined, what they bring me, and it feels great on the face. A lot of things did work. Tamanu, argan, coconut oil on the face. I mean, a lot all of trial these, and error. Trial and error. Mm -hmm. Trial and error. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, why is natural skin care important? Oh, I mean, it's For the average just, person that doesn't. Sure. I mean, there's there are government recognized carcinogens hidden in a lot of our ingredient decks now. So, you know, I mean, things like. Uh, Artificial colors, yellow five, yellow six. I mean, you're seeing, I have a, a, the gold serum coming out here in a month or two. And we get the gold color through a natural ingredients, CoQ10, jojoba oil. I mean, frankincense. I mean, we get a nice, rich, uh, it's like a fire uh, fire yellow, but we get that through the astaxanthin. Uh, just colors. Like, nature will give you everything you need, but adding yellow five, yellow six that a lot of these big names and companies are using to get that gold color. It's just an example of fillers, toxins, um, these are all things that your, your skin um, is, is drinking in, so to speak. And I think it's counterproductive to, to anti-aging. I think the sun bakes that in. I think it's, it's disrupting our endocrine system, our horm horm hormones, excuse me. Um, leads me into a funk. I mean, I remember uh, I was dating someone that worked at USC in the, in the chemistry department to, she was building her own product. She, uh, this is way before I had Alatera. But it was before, I mean, even before Alatura, I was in, interested in skin, all natural skincare. But I tried a product 
and it, it, I, I went, my body went through a whole detox the next day. I, mean, I couldn't even get out of bed. It was like a leave on uh, night cream, night treatment type deal, heavily synthetic, you know, one of those like glycolic, I, I, I mean, add so, sodium benzoate. Uh, so those are some of the side effects of, of these products. Toxic skincare, yeah, exactly. And it was scary as a lot of, I mean, people, the reason why I went through that detox is my body wasn't used to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, these people, pe- not these people, but people, so many people are just used to that toxic response that the body doesn't even go through a detox. They're just absorbing it and dealing with it daily. But mm-hmm. you're, you're baking that into your skin with the sun and it's in your, it's being absorbed into your blood bloodstream within seconds. And I, that's what I really want to educate with people is you could, there are natural, healthy alternatives out there, whether it's my brand or someone else's. It's, yeah. there, there, there are a lot of brands out there that are uh, making a difference in the echo and green um, space. And so it's good to see companies like Nordstrom's and yeah. um, Sephora really making that an important, um, importance as well is what they put on their shelves because people, people will pay for it right I mean it, yeah absolutely people will pay for it and then also it just makes sense you I mean to me to put a, a, a pure substance onto your skin and rub it in and the results will be I think better and and then also it's just what mother nature intended I really believe that and so that's just what we're uh, what our philosophy is and I'm gonna stick with it so what's your take on the uh, supplement and vitamin industry? Is that, are you also um, involved with that? Or Absolutely, we, we have a supplement that, I remember I told, I, after the accident, I met with a lot of Chinese herbalists to help me come up with my, like a, a tonic, so to speak, in the morning to help just build my blood, get that circulation right. going, reduce inflammation, get, get a lot of good nutrients in there because my jaw was wired shut and I couldn't eat, so I needed a nice nutrient dense meal that I could suck through a straw. And that's where Alter Vitalize com- comes in because I, I just encapsulated all of those good uh, superfoods, adaptogenic herbs that reduce inflammation and just, just revitalize the body. That's, uh, that's where the name came from. But So I'm, yeah, I have that. It's just I don't add any fillers, any flowing agents. I mean, you see, it's a corrupt industry to answer your question because a lot of big, big companies add, make these nice colorful pills that have the methyl cellulose, the rice powder, the silica powder, the flowing agent, silicon dioxide to really help, uh, you know, uh, their proprietary blend um, formula. I mean, they're just, I mean, just encapsulating their formula and then funding tests and uh, funding studies and then releasing them to the public where a lot of damage is actually done through that if not, if the research isn't done. and. Um, and a lot of these, you know, find big athletes, sponsor big athletes, right. and you get these kids out there that, that try these products, and it's counterproductive to what they're trying to do in the first place, and they think they're going to be this big, you know, stud athlete mm-hmm. and, uh, because of that, to follow what this guy's doing. Who even knows? I bet, you know, a lot of them aren't even using the product. Right. They're getting paid to uh, endorse them. And so there's a lot of that as well. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in that industry. I just want to, I just have a, like a, I'm on the other side of things where I, I, I've seen that, I've been one of those kids. I now look at the ingredients and the products that I used to buy and, and use and it's okay, I know now, but I just really want to be on the other end of things and I want to tell kids like, look, you know, you, your muscles and your, your frame, will, will, your body will grow into that in the best way possible by using natural uh, nature, uh, you know, food, food sources from nature and, mm-hmm. and I, I believe we can do it that way. So this product here, is it a, a once daily? The revitalizers, yes. Yeah, two, two capsules in the morning. Um, I, I, I bump out, I, I do a lot more, but. Um, and what's the effect? Just, so it's, it's, like, it's like building a house, right? This is essentially long-term benefits of building that blood, that clarity, reducing inflammation. I, I feel like inflammation is the root of all disease. And that's where the turmeric powder comes in. That's where the spirulina comes in. You know, the spirulina is one of the most nutrient dense uh, plant sources and also really dense in protein as well. Um, it's just an algae. And, and so we combine that, we add that in there as well. Gynostemma, schizandra. Uh, there's a nice uh, leucine, an amino acid that helps with the absorption as well. Uh, chaga, organic ratio. I mean, so the big thing here is to strengthen the immune system, reduce inflammation, just get that circulation going from head to toe. And just, you're not, if you're looking, for, if someone's looking for something that is going to just quick fix, and I just, I don't think there is a way to do that naturally. You know, over time, though, 
uh, this is going to keep you, I feel, just feeling your best, you know, that hitting that long term, like, that, that it's like building a house brick by brick, you know, mm-hmm. and then just getting a nice frame from head to toe by reducing that inflammation, just strengthening the immune system. I think with that, I mean, I don't even remember what it feels like to get sick. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's just because of that, but I, I eat really healthy too, but it's part of it, definitely is. Well, uh, you're, you're also uh, an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. um, and uh, sometimes that path is not always easy. Uh, did you face any stumbling blocks along the way, or has it been a pretty steady rise? Um, I know you had some good breaks, uh, but uh, were there any stumbling blo- blocks that you learned from? Absolutely. I had um, looking for manufacturers right off the bat to, to co-pack and and to when we had to scale up, it was very difficult to find people that uh, that I trusted and that also had the same attention to detail with ingredients. You know, if I want to get for six hour milking grass for colostrum, that's what I want to get. I don't want to have some cheaper uh, ingredient bought from Australia in this case that isn't collected within the first six hours. It's not as enzyme rich, it's not as nutrient dense, and I can't do that. And so I know that. I mean, I've been in labs tasting the product in front of all the the chemist they're like, what's this guy doing? And I'm like, ah, something's off. I'm like, what? I'm like, can you show me what you put in here? And all my, my, my ingredients were uh, non-negotiable, mm-hmm. right? But it, they, they found something cheaper on their end to, uh, and I'm like, and they showed me what they got, you know, my nine ingredients. And I'm all, no, oh, it's pearl powder, not pearl extract. And it was very bitter. Mine actually tastes good. Um, the, the Russell clay, completely different. It smelled um, very good. They added a fragrance to it. Um, I'm like, no, because I don't want that fragrance. So, so you knew so, right away. Knew right away. But that, that happened at least three or four times. And so so I would say finding a manufacturer that I trust, that was a big hurdle. Um, delegating, hiring. Uh, people make errors when it's not their baby. I, I rarely did. I rarely did. But the people that I hired, I expected the same level out of them. And it bothered me. You know, having a, a, a package rattle around a lot of our bottles of glass. And so having a break all the way to... Australia, the product arrives, customer's excited, now it's broken, it irritates me, I mean, it's gotta be packed up nice, I have a formula of how I do it. And so coming over, they say, let go and let grow, and that's true, but man, is it hard to do when you have, uh, when you're hiring, and so little, and then the third one I, I would say was, and this is easy, all entrepreneurs out there with the physical product, maybe they know it's, this is embarrassing to even say, but I didn't even sign up for a shipping program until two years into it. So I was going to the post office and I would, I would slap to and from labels and one by one, they would have to weigh them and then come up with the price. They thought it was crazy. Number one, it's a waste of time. Number two, our time is you know, very sure. valuable as, as business owners and it's not the best way to advance our business. Right. And number two, the shipping rates are a lot cheaper when you sign up for these. Right. I mean, this is not rocket science. And then, and then I, you can just print out, slap a label on, and then drop them off. Who would have thought? I mean, I was waiting after a big sale, hours in the post office, and I have pictures of me with these big carts and thinking I'm cool. I mean, it was an all-day thing, but it was like a blue-collar feel that I'll never forget. I loved it. I mean, I, I passed out once in the parking lot, car running. Uh, you know, I heard a ding-ding-ding from the, the guy the, at the post office loading up his truck. And that's kind of funny. That did happen, you know, right? I just get so tired, but it's yeah. good tired, you know? It's like, it's, uh, you know, it's satisfying. But Well, you're putting all, your, all of your energy into what you love. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then just to have that, that thrill of someone, you know, paying their hard-earned money for something that you created out of an apartment. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to me still to this day. And that's why I just want to keep writing this out. And, um, that's, that's where my focus is, just bringing the best, uh, products and, and, and then best customer service too because you only have a customer you only have a business with a customer I can't believe some people screw that up it's something we can control and you can and even if you butcher something or screw something up just I mean hop right on that immediately I mean just go over the top above and beyond on you know making that customer satisfied who knows you may impress that, them even more now you keep them along or at the very least you may irritate them and may not be repairable but you know you know what you did you know you did what I think is the right way to do it. So, Andy, what about uh, an aha moment? Was there any point where you just, everything seemed to click? If the, was there a breakthrough that you just said, okay, this is going to work. This is, this is real. 
Um, when the product launched on the Bulletproof site, June 26, 2014, I, yeah, I was in, I was on, a, I got the GoGo in flight, uh, my laptop, I was flying to Chicago uh, to visit some friends. And uh, yeah, when our podcast aired, uh, I believe it was the second or the third one with Dave, when he announced that it was going to be, it, he introduced it on the Bulletproof site. I mean, I, I can't, I can't describe that feeling. And that was like, this is happening. I mean, you're seeing, I'm getting goosebumps right now, just thinking about it. I mean, I just remember, you know, clicking on a site that I've been on for years, ordering product, checking out, and now I can buy my own product, you know? It's a trip. And so that's when I have so much respect for Bulletproof and to be on that uh, site and to be selling a product that I made out of that, out of that dingy little apartment. It's, I'll never forget that. I think about that all the time. So let's talk about day to day. You seem very hands-on. You're, you're really involved. I, I know you came off a great call. The thrill of a sale. What's that like? Come Tuesday. I wish you were here Tuesday. It's, it gets crazy in here. And that's the way it should be. It's you want, it's it, that excitement. I love, it's a, it's a spice of life, right? To have that, and now granted, we're, we're doing a store-wide sale Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and our, uh, you know, our, it's it's intriguing to a lot of, of our existing customers because we do have a high price point. And so those sales are, are great. We're introducing, we have a really good one this time because we're going to be including little samplers of our, our fragrance, which is just, I mean, it's another big one that's coming out in the fall. That's the next generation. Yeah. The next so product. Next product. That and the, the body oil are next, in the serum. So we've got three ones coming out, three new products by the end of uh, 2017 that are going to be released. We're going to kind of ease them out. It's a, I love doing it. It's kind of like a little tease. Well, I mean, it's just it's exciting for me, but they're, all three of those are done. They're done, and uh, so now it's just kind of the product timeline. When do we release it? But when these, so I on my on my phone, my phone's on silent right now. But it's I have a little. Uh, luckily, Rex the, is my tech guy, so he's able to program in a little choo choo train when uh, um, when a sale comes in. Jeff Bezos from Amazon, they used to have a bell when they first started off when when the, when a sale would come in. We have to appreciate those moments. And what we have to make, we have, I have to make sure that everybody here is as excited as I am. Every time. Ding, 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 whatever it is. Choo, 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 something. High fives. I mean, it's an absolute crazy, uh, crazy awesome atmosphere that it's exciting. It's like, hey, look, you know, you got to show. We work our absolute tail off here. I'm up at six. I'm six to six. I take a 15 minute nap. I go work out and then I come back here, shower, and I'm back. You know, I mean, I'll work until 10, 11 p.m., maybe uh, midnight. So do that 18 hour days where um, I don't, I don't care. There's nothing else I'd rather be doing. But we work so hard. We have to enjoy the fruits of our labor and those, the sales, the but the reviews. I would say the sales are probably. Just seeing a sale come in, there's there's no other feeling. The reviews are pretty close. You know, a five star review, that's uh, and I, yeah, it's all you know. Reviews are something I, I take. I mean, so much pride in, and the extent of their reviews. You know, I mean, who likes writing a review? You take the time to, to repair right, that. Right. You know, it's just really, it's they really cared, really changed, made a big right. impact on them. Right. For them I mean, to take the time. And I, I you know, it's a lot of the time I'll just fire back and I'll just respond back to them personally or I'll just tell them what I know. I know nobody likes writing reviews. I mean, hey, look, I like the, I like the meal I had on E24 recently and hey, would you mind rating? And I, I gave them a quick little, like a five star or whatever, but I, you know, like, I don't write the paragraphs. Why? I mean, if it's so important to me, it could help some other business. So maybe I'll start doing that as well. But point is it takes time and a lot of us don't do it. But the fact that people do, for mine so often, it's uh, there's something there, there's something special about this brand. I really feel that, and it's uh, yeah, I'm just I'm excited, I'm really excited. How important is your team? I know you mentioned Rex, he's been great to work with the last couple of days, setting yeah. us up today, and um, I know you have others that uh, how important is that for you to, to have people that you could count on, rely on day to day? It's it's very hard to get uh, the synergy that we have here is. And it's something that you dream of. I mean, to get that that team chemistry, uh, to know that I can leave and they're going to get it done because they want to, they care, they're great dudes, they're friends. Um, so there's a lot of, it's, this is so personal, you know? So a lot of people say business, you never make it personal, but I don't know. I mean, 
sometimes we, we have our little things here and there, but that's, that's life. Um, there's nobody else I'd rather have here with me. Um, we've had several employees come in here and the hiring process is, is difficult, but that's part of it, mm -hmm. part of running a business. When you find someone that um, isn't as in it as, as you, and I can't expect them to all be <laughs> me. I, uh, I need to work on myself as well, I do, and how I um, balance my, you know, and being assertive and uh, the way I talk to people because I expect a lot, you know, because I, but I, I need to convey that and I'm learning on the, on the go myself on how to convey that in the best way and how to communicate what I want to do to, to others. And, uh, and you, you know, you get more, what's it? You get more flies with honey or something like that. You get, you get more stuff done, but I want to work for someone that treats me with respect, kindness and, it's fun to be around, and not that I don't re that I don't resent. I've had bad jobs, like, jobs like that in the past. So running a business right now that way is so important to me to do so, and and to have a team uh, of investors that I want to to prove right on their investment into something I created. That's another. Uh, it's just another big part that just kind of ignites me every morning. So I got very lucky. I did, but now it's just on me to take that and run with it. You know, get. I mean, I really feel like. The, the luck part of it is hopefully derived from the, the work and the, the, the true intentions and also the, just the, yeah, hopefully there's some karma in there too because I, I feel like I've really, you know, I don't know, treating people right in my life, so I don't know, we'll see. No, that's great. And uh, you mentioned uh, Dave Asprey, uh, Bulletproof, yeah. um, and great story how you found your way in there uh, through through the emails, but um, yeah. uh, do you subscribe to his uh, techniques? It sounds like you... Every single one of them. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to talk. I mean, well, I'm happy to do it, but, you know, people sometimes lose trust. Hey, you know, what, what's this guy's angle or my, you know, because I'm always promoting the products. I'm, I'm not, I don't work for them. I don't get a cut. I don't have an affiliate relationship, even though I could. I just want people, I, I'm just, you know, I want people to trust me in everything I say and um, I'm, I'm just telling the truth. I love his products, you know. You uh, believe in it? Oh my God! Yeah. Um, his just his coffee, his approach to sourcing, and and his attention to detail, and to be aligned with that. You you sit across from someone who is that way, which he and I did when we first started talking about this. You, it's contagious, and you fire away questions, and there are certain things that you don't really, it's a rabbit hole, but it's the best rabbit hole ever, because you keep going with, wait a minute, oh, how'd you find out about this Creole Ariba from Dominican Republic, this cacao that is raw at 90%, I mean, we just start geeking out on these things, but awesome. it's an attention to detail that is rarely found, but when combined, it's it's like Don't a combustion. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, Dave's been just such a, a huge part of this that it's, uh, yeah, I could, I could write a book just on how much he's helped me. It's great to have someone like that, an advisor, a consultant, a partner on your side, you know. So, yeah, I got lucky that one of those emails went through. No doubt. Well, everything's purposeful. Exactly. I agree. Uh, has there been something that you learned uh, that you might be able to share that could help others that, that may have, you know, maybe they're thinking about their next idea, whether it's in skincare or not? Absolutely. I would say pay attention to the things that excite you. I mean, uh, Jim Carrey said it in a, a speech uh, about a year ago or something, you know, this, this is only, this is our only life, you know. I mean, whether it's a job, and you know, I remember so, uh, a friend of mine told me when I was working nightlife jobs and um, service industry jobs, she said, take that leap, leave, like you're not meant to poison people bartending and uh, you're not meant to be a waiter. Like, take that leap and leave and focus on nutrition, focus on personal training and helping others. I guarantee it's going to work out. I resented that from her. So, oh, what am I going to do? Just leave my job that pays my bills? I'm like, oh yeah, how? Is it just going to magically appear? I'm telling you that things happen. Things have a, you know, usually have a, a, a way of working themselves out. Now, I, finding out how to do that, find, find a way, find a way. You know, I would say trusting in the universe and taking that leap as hard as it is. And I didn't do it. I had something that just fell into my lap and, and booking, going on the audition to, to Oakley and being able to get me out of uh, my nightlife job to, when I booked that campaign for Oakley as a model, I was able to um, focus. I didn't have to work, I didn't have to bartend anymore. And I was able to focus all my time on working for Oakley, you know, hours, you know, a week. And then, but also 
formulating and really doing my, my product research and ingredient research for Alatura. And so that was essentially my big break right there. But I would say, man, pay attention to the things that excite you. You never know when it's going to turn into something that, you know, the things that you would do without getting paid for it. Playing a guitar, you know, find a one-man show, something like that. Find something that's going to make you feel good. And you're, 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 well, I think we all have something special inside of us. We all have a gift, you know, pursue that, find that, you know. And then, you know, I love, I love helping people find theirs. It's happened a couple times and God, it's so cool. You know, Very rewarding. It is. Yeah, it's unbelievable. There's a painting I'll show you and hanging in my room that this guy never even he's never had anybody tell him that he was uh, you know, he was a good artist. He was doodling in front of me, screwing around with a pencil and like on a little uh, sticky note. I'm like, what's that? He's like a little. He had it in his head. He didn't have anything to go on. It was like an, an ident identical Disney character. And so I, long story short, I found my favorite lion three uh, Google image, printed it out, sent it to him. <laughs> Wait till you see this this painting in my room. It's Unbelievable, but who would have known if you would have ever, you know, found that? I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying like, but like, it's just, it's unbelievable. We all have some type of gift, yeah. you know, pursue it. So what's next for Alatura? Who, oh man, so I'm going to New York on a press tour. Um, I'm meeting with a lot of big brands that I, I just want to soak it, soak up their knowledge. But it's interesting. I don't know where these meetings are going to lead to. I, it's really like going into those meetings. Uh, not blind, but big brands that I'm in awe that I'm will only see when I walk through those doors how I feel. And then visiting my uh, my Smile Train, a charity that that we donate to, that's gonna be great. And um, what is that? What's that? What's the charity? Oh, Smile Train. So they, it's a cleft repair surgery, and so it's like right right here where the the lip kind of goes up into the nose, and we we help. Uh, uh, not only us, a lot of uh, companies have got together to help. It's a very sus they have a sustainable model where they teach uh, surgeons how to a uh, cleft repair sure. to, 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 to execute that surgery. And I, I had such a tough time after my surgery or after my accident with my smile because only one face would show up because of that nerve severed. Because that nerve was severed. And so I can relate to somewhat to what it feels like to not being happy. Um, in a moment where you're smiling and being like kind of insecure, yeah. I mean, it was just, you know what I mean? You, you want to smile, but now you're insecure because you look weird. And so, yeah, that's, that's why it's very important to me. That's you know, great to, cause. To My it daughter is. was born uh, with something called a hemangioma, and um, the doctor, Dr. Milton Weiner, he's out of New York, mm -hmm. uh, he's an expert in, in uh, the cleft lip repair and, yeah. and um, you know, facial deformities. So wow. uh, it is a great cause. It's unbelievable. It's changing. It's just, to take someone who's kind of gotten used to waking up a certain way and not being happy with what they see in the mirror and that like crippling feeling, and then just, just oh man, I've, I've had it happen like a couple times where customers have shown me like before and after, it's just with the acne, but that's very similar. I mean, you know, how crippling a, like a bad case of acne can be, and then to just, you see a new, beautiful butterfly come out of that cocoon and it's just must make you feel so good it, I mean that's it's the most rewarding that's why you do this yeah. it's 100% right, why I do right. it yeah so look this has been wonderful I, I really I truly appreciate your time yeah. um, but before we let you go yeah. one more question you're sure. a young guy you have a lot of years ahead of you but uh, if you ever think about what do you want your legacy to be when you leave this earth what do you want to accomplish i uh, two things I, I want well I, I want people to really go it's important to me kindness you know and just just uh, humility we're all right here you know I, I love just being uh, you know just having general conversations with you know uh, homeless just whatever it is I don't care I've, I, I got the second chance at life and I'm truly grateful and happy to be here and so I I, I you know, the sincerity behind those conversations and just, I, I really do care and I want to hear other, other stories. We all have them. I want to, I want to learn more about people and I hope people see that, that like, I, I truly do care how I treat people and, and that I want to, uh, you know, want to hear what, what, what you're about. I want to hear other stories. So that's, I think like, you know, the way, uh, the way I'm, my legacy with the brand, there's just, I, there's what, that's the second part. Just, I, I'm obsessed with cleanliness of products and creating what I believe to be 
the best product, regardless of cost. I want to get that obsessive trust of being the only brand on the shelves. Like, oh, it's Alatura. And like the funny stories that are created through my obsession in formulating these. Right. Of driving down to the lab in Santa Ana, putting on a hairnet and going, I'm sorry, we're not on the same page. And doing the, the, the fragrance myself. And that happened. You know, these are people that work with huge brands that I mean, have a, it's just, there are funny, quirky little stories about my, my uh, you know, the, the lengths that I'll go to in sourcing and, and creating my products. But that, uh, that, that legacy just by, by just creating that customer trust, hopefully it leads to that, man, that, you know, hopefully that ain't, man, he just, he just, he, he wouldn't release a product unless it was the best. And um, that combined with the way, you know, treating people as a reflection of yourself, it was just, it, it's just, that's how I want to be. And then hopefully down the road, maybe, uh, uh, you know, psychology is really important to me. I, I, had, I suffered from anxiety, sports, sports psychology specifically. I'd like to maybe get, get into, uh, get into some, involved with some high schools. Remember my coach, I was telling you about freshman year and be the, the opposite of that and tell, tell young kids, look, I mean, cause you really can. I've seen it time and time again, where you work your ass off and you, you, uh, you know, you, you, and then the you, coach yeah, dumps you, you down. Yeah, and then but but you, all you need is just one guy mm -hmm. to, to believe in you. But what this guy believe? You never know. You can change someone's life, and you, you really can. If you don't, I don't want to say you can do anything you put your mind to. But if you work as hard as you can into that, that discipline and that work ethic stays with you. That diligent, uh, diligent. I mean, just it just sticks with you for the rest of your life. I mean, that's all I know. I wake up with a little ignited. You know, I have to get up. I, whatever it is, I have to get up. I have to. You know, I just, you know, have to get going, but start at an early age. So maybe I'll get back and start working with some high schools. But look, man, what do you want? You know, it's just that encouraging, encouraging, inspiring others to, oh, wait, this guy thinks I can. Heck yeah, you can. I've seen it time and time again. It's people just following through or believing, you know, in themselves. And they end up a lot of the time knocking down those goals, you know. Andy Nilo, you are a class act. So This has you. been wonderful. I can't wait to air this episode. And... Uh, let's stay in touch. Absolutely. Thank you for having Thanks me so on. Much.